Well, good morning and welcome back to another PE at home for Middleton Elementary Mustangs. Hopefully you've had some good rest and I can't wait to go and see what you get to do today. Our day two agenda, we're going to do a warm up with a day one review, do some ball control. We're going to be moving into dribbling which might be challenging for some of my K1 friends. And then we're going to do a review and another cool down or calm down. For our warm up day. Remember, if you can do this in your space, I'd love to and see you doing it. If not, it's okay, you can move ahead to the next warm-up, but this is called a basketball shuffle. Just getting ourselves moving side to side, and you can switch directions if you feel like it. As I do these recordings for warm-ups, I'm going to go through the warm-ups kind of quick, so feel free to go and stop them if you want to do them a little bit longer, but our goal is to get our heart saying thank you. The next one is called Cherry Pickers where you jump up and you reach for a cherry way up high in the tree. See if you can get the top ones, the really high cherries. So it's just like skipping and reaching at the same time. This is another challenging skill, especially for kindergarten and first grade. But I know you can do it if you give it a lot of effort and you try. Just reach for those cherries. All right. Our day one review is also going to be a part of our warm up as well. We're going to do some quick practice from day one. Remember we're using finger pads for this first one, so grab a ball, and we're going to do swatters. So this one we're doing is the one where you jump back and forth using both hands and just swatting the ball back and forth, really trying to use those finger pads, building up our skill of getting the ball to bounce back and forth. Now as I said before, you can modify this by using a hill, if you have a hill in your backyard or in your front of your driveway. If you don't have a wall that you can bounce against, you can find a hill, maybe even a slide. I know I was using that um, out back as well, where I put a ball on our slide and pushed it up it and let it come back down. But our goal is just to use our finger pads to get the ball to go off of our fingers and moving forward. All right, and then this one's a little bit more challenging, but a lot of fun. Again, you can jump and switch. If you can't do this, you can keep doing the first one that we were working on. Our goal is just to get us moving and grooving and get that heart saying thank you. Nice little warm up. So this one might be challenging for some of you as you switch directions and let the ball get through your legs. Nice job all of you working hard getting those muscles warming up. Getting your heart to say thank you and beating faster. All right, I'm just gonna review this. If you'd like to go and do this for part of your warm-up, you can set up a course again, and you can go through it with your dribble derby. That is up to you, where you get a dribble around to make your own obstacle course. I really love the courses that I saw from everyone. So again, this is what mine looked like from before. That was my warm-up. You can make up any course you want to. If you don't wanna get obstacles, you can just dribble around on your floor, uh, in your house backyard, wherever your parents say that it's safe. Again, everything you do, make sure you ask your parents to make sure it's okay and that, it's, that you're just staying safe, healthy, and active. And this is a side view of the one where I did with three of them, well, the bigger obstacles. So again, these are just warm-ups, so we're going through them kind of quick. Let's just get your body moving. You don't have to do these. You can do your own just some ideas of getting your body moving in your own personal space. All right, for day two agenda, I'm working on ball control next. So this one you may have seen if you did some of our test runs last week, but it's a good way to go and just get ball control using our finger pads and moving the ball around our body. So we're starting with one leg and carrying the ball around one leg. After you get around one leg, you can start going to the other leg as well. Make sure that you switch so you do three times on each leg if you can. The smaller ball will be a little bit easier to get around the legs. The larger ball is easier for tracking and sometimes for bouncing. So again, modify as needed. If you don't have a ball, you can use um, rolled up socks or a shoe, maybe your hat. No, I'm just kidding. Don't use your cap. Alright, this next one gets a little bit more challenging. You're going in and out of your legs, through the front and out the back. Through the front and out the back. Take your time. 
I know I make it a little bit e look a little bit easier, but that's because I'm six foot five and have these huge long legs and long arms, kind of like a monkey. But you might have to take your time a little more because the ball might be a little bit bigger. And if you need to, switch balls or switch objects that you're going or working with uh, to move around your legs. All right, skill builder point four: you're carrying the ball around your waist, slowly warming up this body. This is still kind of a part of our warm up but it's a skill builder at the same time. A lot of you have already seen these and that's why I'm going through them a little bit quickly. But again, those were not required because that was just our test run last week. Now going around our head, slowly working up to the rest of our muscles. Make sure that when you're going around this, using those finger pads. And just be careful so you don't hit yourself in the face. I've done it before, it's not pretty. All right, moving on to dribbling now. This one is gonna be sort of a challenge. So the first ones that we do, we're just gonna be dropping and catching the ball, trying to get ourselves moving. And if that's all that you can do by the end of the day, that's all you need to. The uh, kindergarten and first grade skills are attempting to dribble, but your main goal and the uh, benchmark for dribbling for kindergarten and first grade is being able to drop the ball and catch it without letting it bounce a second time. And the other one is to dribble it at least once by the time you are in second grade. So again, kindergarten, first grade, uh, some of these might be challenging. And we're just reaching for the sky and hoping that you get as far as you can. So don't give up and work hard. So the first one, drop and catch a ball. I'm using a soft gator skin ball here so it doesn't bounce very well. So you can see how challenging it is. I have to catch it very low. But you might have yours bounce really high goal is to drop and catch. If you can do this, you're reaching the benchmark. You've already reached our minimum of what we need to do today. The rest will be some challenging uh, items for you to go and try. So again, drop and catch with both hands. All right, now this one gets a little bit trickier. This is where you're alternating your hands, one in front, one behind. You drop the ball, catch it, drop the ball, catch it, drop the ball, catch it. I like how hard you're working on this one. Don't give up if you don't get it. It is challenging. And the next one gets even harder. You put both hands in front and then both hands behind. You're dropping and catching. If you can't get this one, it's okay. Just keep working on it. And if for some reason it doesn't work, we're just going to move on. This is just a challenge. Just to help you with some more ball control, tracking and catching. Great work so far, friends. All right, this is one of my favorite slides to look at. You have three different versions of dribbling. You have the really high, which is how most people start way over here, where the ball goes way up over your head. You have the medium, where the ball gets to your waist and your knees when you're making contact. So you see how my hand is right here. Then you have the low, where the ball is way down by your ankles and your shins. Which one do you think is best? Which one do you think would be easiest to control and wouldn't take it the most work? So, looking at would you like dribble high, medium, or low? Ooh, if you're going above your head, you might have some troubles tracking where that ball is going and your feet might get a little bit out of control. If you're going too low, you might work really hard trying to keep that ball bouncing and it might stop on you. You can see we got a nice memo from our friends there. Um, now if you look at this, just right is in the middle. And the reason why is because you don't have to bend over. You have your knees and your waist is right where your arm naturally hangs. So if you look at my other hand, simply rest in between these arrows. So if it's already resting there, why not bounce and dribble with the hand right there as well? Don't have to work too hard. If you can do this, you are above grade level. Nice work. If not, just keep working on it. This is a third grade skill that we're going into. But the reason why we're trying it now is so when you do get to third grade, it is easy and you are able to accomplish it. But again, your skill that you need is being able to drop and catch the ball. All right, 
One of our critical elements for when you do dribbling is you want to get those eyes up. You want to be looking over the ball and we want to have the ball just slightly off to our side using those finger pads. So remember our big focus was using finger pads. I'm still looking at that but now we're adding in eyes up. Now moving on, trying to dribble and walk. If you can get your eyes up, that's even better. You look at how Mr. W's eyes are actually looking down and a little bit over the ball. I'm really focusing on where I'm going, but I'm not looking directly at the ball the entire time. So again, all these are going to be a little bit more challenging each time that we go. Now here, I tried it just for fun. I grabbed one of my daughter's bouncy balls that they had, and it was a tennis ball. And I'm doing it on a very soft floor. I'm alternating hands and walking forward. This is actually very challenging because it's a small ball, it's harder to track. So if you have a small ball, it might be more challenging for you as well. Take your time, relax, breathe. If you can't do something, try one of the other challenges. So from there, this is how you know if you can, and this is the third grade grading scale because this is not a kindergarten first grade skill that you need to be able to do. So again, if you are in kindergarten or first grade, friends, and you're right here, that is okay. I can attempt to dribble with my hands, but I don't always make consistent contact with the ball. That means sometimes you might miss, sometimes the ball might stop. That is okay. You're above grade level if you're able to dribble a ball with your hand while standing still. If you can dribble a ball with your hands while walking, and we worked on that skill, you're at a three, which means you're at third grade level. And if you can do it with three out of the five critical elements, you're ready to be a rock star. You can be looking at more of a fourth and fifth grade level, just to kind of give you an idea. So again, if you're even just attempting to dribble with your hands and you can use your fingertips that is awesome. If it doesn't bounce back the way you want it to or you aren't able to do more than one bounce, you're still doing great. So these are what the critical elements are and this is what we're working towards. There's a reason why we show you this is, are your knees slightly bent like Mr. W's? Do you have your opposite foot forward when dribbling in self space? And here I didn't do that because I wanted you to see the ball off to the side a little bit more. Are you making contact with your finger pads? So you look at my finger pads are touching the ball more than anything. Do you have firm contact with the top of the ball or the side of the ball if you're moving forward? And you see I'm pushing the ball down and it's bouncing right back up to where I'm pushing. It keeps going to the same space, right where that arrow is. So, and then are your eyes looking over the ball? So here I'm really exaggerating. I'm looking way straight out to where I'm traveling. And that's number five. Congratulations if you're able to do any of those critical elements. All right, the next one. Again, we did this course before. You're gonna try making a course in dribbling. So you have three options here. You can either dribble how Mr. W is where you're dribbling. You can alternate hands as well. That's option number one. Option number two, as you move through your course, you can drop and catch the ball. So you can drop and catch the ball as you move through it. Or option number three, you can go back to do our dribble derby where the ball stays on the ground and you make your course how you want to. Get creative. I look forward to seeing your videos of how you move and how you groove. I am so excited to see what you do. Alright, our review. Did some skill builders. We did our ball control rally. Our big thing that we want to know is how do you know if you were successful? Can you control the ball using your finger pads? So even if the ball has to stay on the ground, if you can push it around and control it with your finger pads, you were successful today. If you can control the ball without losing balance, meaning when you dropped it and you caught it and you didn't lose balance or you didn't lose the ball, you're also successful. And that's reaching two benchmarks in one lesson, which is awesome. Great job for all of you that were able to do either one of those. If you're able to do both, give yourselves a pat on the back as well. Alright, it's time to calm down a little bit. I want you to find your comfortable space and relax. You can see we're changing this up slowly. I want you to think of your favorite place outdoors and pretend you're there. Maybe that's the space that you're at right now. You know, mine's out in the woods somewhere. 
where the birds are chirping, sometimes along a river or climbing high in the mountain. One of my favorite places to go is up by Lake Superior. But wherever your place is, I bet it's amazing, I bet it's beautiful. Just think of the sounds and the sights that you see or you hear while you're there. Focus on calmly breathing as we let our heart come down. It's saying thank you for all the stuff that you did today and all the skills you worked on. Now I want you to think about all the amazing skills you worked on today. You did an awesome job. I am so proud of all the work that you've done. Be proud of what you have done. You did that. You spent the last few minutes working on some great challenging skills and if you didn't give up or you didn't get frustrated and you stayed calm, you were successful. You were a winner today. You're what a Mustang should be. When you're done today, I'd like you to tell one person thank you for helping you work on your skills, whoever it was. Maybe it was a friend or a parent, or grandpa, grandma, or a mom or a dad. Maybe it was your dog or your cat, your turtle. I want you to find one person or one thing that you can say thank you to for helping you work on the things that you did today. Maybe they helped you set up your computer, your iPad, your Chromebook, or whatever you have. Maybe they found some great uh, balls for you to use or obstacles. Maybe they did the activity with you. Make sure you let them know that you care about them. As always, I want you to know, as your teacher, Mr. Weissling here, I notice you. I care about you, and I want you to succeed. I hope that you stay healthy, safe, and active, and have a great rest of your day. See you next.